Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask FUH and today we will be talking about diabetes, one of the most commonly discussed topics and yet there is so much that still needs to be done on this. And uh, this uh, this year's theme for World Diabetes Day, which falls on November 14th, is access to diabetes care. And we have with us a diabetes expert, consultant endocrinologist, Dr. Ahmed Hassoun, who's been working on this field for more than three decades. So Dr. Hassoun, thank you for joining us today and uh, raising awareness about diabetes. So since the theme is access to diabetes care, and there are so many resources available around the world. Why do you think that there is still more work that is required in terms of providing access to diabetes care when it comes to right sources, right information, right, right consultation? Well, uh, let me first thank you for inviting me to be with you and to talk about this important uh, subject actually access to care, medical to diabetes care have been since the last, uh, this is the third year, okay? because of the importance of it, as you, as you mentioned. Because with all the advances we have, we're still having some pro problems with access to care. Now, access to care, first of all, from patients to get the care, from people even to, uh, to diagnose themselves, and also for the doctors. Sometimes we have also difficulty of getting the right medications, and maybe sometimes even with the insurance, having difficulty to cover you know, access to our patient that we'd like to give them this medication. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they will not have the access to that because of the some restriction of the insurance. So we hope by raising awareness, talking more about access, hopefully things will be getting easier and will be available, hopefully different accesses start. First access I would like to focus on is access to P of the people to, uh, to, to go a doctor, general doctor, family physician, uh, just to know the risk, if they have really risk, and there are some risk factors that we might talk about it later if you want, about uh, if they have a risk, yes, go and check. And if you check and you find you have diabetes or pre-diabetes even, or normal, just to know where you are. And if it is like pre-diabetes, then again, it's very important to prevent from getting into diabetes. And again, you need the access to the right you know, physician to do that. Now, if you have diabetes, again, you have to know if you have diabetes, it's very important to diagnose it early. And that's why when you do that, you will diagnose early before the complications start to you know, happening in these people as if they are not knowing it, sometimes they come into us already with complication. Mm. So it's very important to raise this awareness about everybody should have an access and I just encourage the patients or the people in general who have risk factors, uh, we can talk about it later on, they really need to focus into going and do screening for diagnosis, whether it's diabetes or even no diabetes or in between. Hmm. So Dr. Sincere, speaking about risks, uh, having like I have had a family history of mm -hmm, diabetes mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. and somebody who is always uh, health uh, or hypochondriac about right, health right. things I had always been checking my blood sugar and then gotten into you know different uh, things and treatments about it but there are so many people who are still unaware that you know just a simple blood test could also tell them exactly. about uh, their blood sugar levels and again diabetes is one of the lifestyle diseases right. so uh, how do one identify risk? Okay, good. That was what I was trying to come to and thank you for again re-emphasizing the point that there are some risk factors and uh, in the United Arab Emirates, for example, since we are talking about here in this country, uh, we came with some guidelines about this and it's important to clarify these things. So first of all, any person in UAE age 30 and above, whatever, they should go and screen for diabetes or no diabetes or pre-diabetes. Now, if they are not, if they are younger even, and they have overweight or obese, plus one risk factor that I will list some of them now, uh, then they have to go to screen even less than 30 years old, okay? And these are, as you probably mentioned, family history is important. People who have heart disease already, they need to screen for diabetes because they are commonly associated. The blood pressure, hypertension, or take medication, or even having high blood pressure cholesterol and lipids problem, triglyceride high, these people have high risk and this is a risk factor. So if they have one of these and others, as we mentioned earlier, uh, for example, um, the gestational diabetes, this is a risk factor. Some people who have already been diagnosed with pre-diabetes, 
they are already risk for developing diabetes in the future so they need to be careful and again screening again to check if they are still or even better even to get back to normal rather than developing diabetes uh, for example some signs of insulin resistance we see in people for example they have something called in the neck like the darkening of the skin called acanthosis nigricans is another sign that people if they have that they need to think about checking into the sugar and also polycystic ovary which is commonly seen in you know the younger age you know in our country here as well so these are some of uh, the important lists that we have and if you talk about ethnicity i think the asian having high tendency to develop diabetes as well as the arabs here so this is important to remember so these factors 30 and above without any risk factor to be screened less than 30 with this obesity and or overweight plus one of these risk we mentioned, risk yeah. factors. Well, we as Asians or Middle Easterners, we love our baklavas and we love our sweets. We just yeah. finished with Diwali celebrations. Right. Right. So I think it's high time that we keep doing these exactly. checks. Exactly. How frequent do you think the screening should be done? Well, again, we do it first time and then if it is not, I would suggest because the condition might change, you know, I would suggest uh, the recommendation usually say two to three years, you know, to repeat it if it's normal, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's abnormal or if it's pre-diabetes, then you do it more frequently, you know, like a year from there. And even I think it's better that because people, if they don't do any changes, for example, they might increase their weight. We probably think that better to even do it on an annual basis, just to be sure they are not missing the diagnosis and coming into a later stage. So um, if anything, they can delay three years, for example, after completely normal, and, of, uh, and I would recommend that if they are still frequently suggesting that the risk factor is still there or getting worse, to check it even on an annual basis if they were normal. And okay. what tests would the screenings involve? That's a good one. We have, uh, I would say, probably three tests at least uh, for diabetes and pre-diabetes. And for diabetes, we have four, four tests doing it. First of all, fasting is one. And the second thing is uh, we do it like uh, random for diabetes now. If somebody is randomly checked for sugar, and for example, it was a number of 200 and above, but he has symptoms like going to the bathroom, all the symptoms of uh, diabetes, thirsty, going to the bathroom frequently, daytime, nighttime, losing weight without any reason, and this can be diagnostic at that time. But commonly we use HbA1c is for diagnosis as well as the fasting sugar. There is other way we do it, but it's more cumbersome a little bit. We don't do it as screening is we do it in for pregnancy, gestational diabetes screening is the oral glucose tolerance test when they give them glucose to drink and we can check the levels and if it's diabetes or not. Two very key things that I noted from this uh, list of tests that you talked about. So one thing is about weight. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about like somebody losing weight often, but does gaining weight is also a risk factor and a symptom of somebody having diabetes. Right, right. so so uh, as a risk factor, yes, gaining weight or obese or overweight as Michelle is a risk factor, uh, plus one additional factor that we counted to be for screening. But what I'm talking about, a sign of usually diabetes is losing weight sometimes. Why? Mm. Because the sugar is high and the person will lose the calories taken in the urine and they go to the bathroom frequently. Yeah. So these people get, uh, you know, uh, weight loss and mm -hmm. it's not a good sign because they're not doing anything. They're losing weight and they are, sometimes they think they are happy that they, they lost some weight, but unfortunately it's not in a, in a nice way. It's just more of a sickness type, you know, yes. weight loss. So we yeah. don't like that. But uh, I agree with you that increasing weight is more of a risk factor for uh, for diabetes and pre-diabetes and that's why you need to screen for that but if you have these symptoms again you go and screen for it because it might have been already established diabetes mm -hmm. and the second uh, important thing was about gestational diabetes so uh, who in women like most um, people are aware now that yeah. if they would have a certain risk factor specifically that they would be uh, having gestational diabetes but what happens in gestational mm -hmm. diabetes like why does a pregnant woman get gestational diabetes well again the same risk you know increasing weight and having family history maybe something else so genetic there should be some genetic factor involving their tendency to develop diabetes but then they are gaining weight for example then they have more tendency to develop with this but the, we, what we usually do as you know is screening for these people whatever the history is they do it in week 24 to 28 they do the OGTT that we said uh, we talked about earlier and during that time they discover but 
why this one having gestation why this one does not have most likely the weight is an important factor the second thing is the genetic predisposition from family history so the one who have family history have more tendency mm. add to it then increasing weight will be another problem and then for sure these people have more tendency than people who have regular weight and no family history so doc in gestational diabetes mm. specifically does it go away after you have given birth that's a good uh, point that i was going to talk but you got to raise it now is that uh, and this is we're missing it sometimes here uh, for the gynecologists who are involved in you know managing this uh, you know gestational diabetes uh, people is that they really have to enforce uh, that they have to be checked 6 to 12 weeks after delivery because some of them will stay to have some abnormal sugar let's say pre-diabetes maybe or maybe even diabetes so they need to know where their status is and more importantly is in addition to doing this is to ask them that uh, watch carefully your weight and you know you have to lose weight basically so that in the future you probably don't have gestation if you have weight reduction and not only that to prevent from diabetes to to come in the future so it's very important this in addition to that we like also and i think the gynecologists and obstetrician are working on that as well is to advise not to gain so much weight during pregnancy you know yes. because it's not necessary just gain the important weight that you need some of the people already overweight and obese they yeah. don't need to gain like other people yeah. you know they have already some enough store to help them with the yeah. baby and their pregnancy yeah so it's not to eat for the two <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> yes so uh, you touched upon a very important point about diet and exercise the entire role that it plays in right. the management of right. diabetes mm -hmm. and uh, there are so many medications available right. now that uh, help and with advanced medications being available for managing the weight uh, how uh, how well balanced this entire plan should be can you highlight the importance of it right again it depends on the types we did not talk about the types as you probably well aware of the type 1 we have and type 2, type 2. type 2 is the more common one and probably we're talking more about type 2 so type 2 medication is now plenty we are lucky now these days yes. i remember when i was in the us before coming here we have only two medication insulin and glucophage and yeah. and sulfonylurea also so mm. two tablets i mean and one injectable which is the insulin now we have plenty so yes. we are we are happy that we have all this thing and we have different types of medication now it depends on the case so we try to take it as on an individual basis mm -hmm. so we look into the person what is his problem other than diabetes blood pressure having heart problem having kidney problem then we select the one because we have now more choices actually more you know uh, i would say focus on certain problems for example some medication are good for the heart for mm -hmm. diabetes it is yes. but it's good for the heart and actually protective to the heart yes. and some of them protective to the kidney so again we have to select but we have quite few now the other point that you mentioned also and i would like to emphasize on it that lately we're trying to diagnose early and also try to reverse diabetes make mm. it back to normal if possible yes. especially with what you just mentioned we have a new medication including the strong medication that help in weight reduction so if we have somebody who's newly diagnosed with diabetes uh, within a few years, even maybe within a couple of years or even a little bit more, still there is chance that we can reverse it by weight reduction. Again, going back to the important mm. point in type 2, you have to have weight reduction. So if you lose, we, what we recommend, if they are interested, we talk about them about this option, is they have to lose about 10 to 15 percent of their weight. Then clearly, after what they have to stop this medication and keep them on that lower level of weight, we can check the sugar is gone. But if they gain weight again, sugar will come back and they have diabetes again because they lost the environmental problem, but yes. the genetics still there. And if they go back to the same environmental problem with weight, weight increase, then they will have diabetes again. So one cannot, ex uh, you know, eliminate the diet and exercise, even if medication they have is to, there. This is all yes. supplemental to the intensive yes. lifestyle modification with diet and exercise. For yes, sure, yeah. yes, it's a 360 degree approach. Exactly. And since we're talking about a complete approach, how much uh, importance uh, the mental health aspects of, you know, how, because it's a lifestyle disease. So right. it's also expected that people even get diabetes out right. of, you know, psychosomatic uh, factors. Right. So how can one take care of their mental 
health factors that could help them um, well, manage that. Usually with education, you can take care of most of the people, but as you said, there are some people even very difficult to accept the disease and yes. they have a denial in the beginning. But I think if you have good education that you teach your patient, speak with him more, speak with her more and, you know, sitting and explaining that this is, you know, can be handled, can be lived with it and we have no problem if you do the right thing. You can, but sometimes you might need to ask the mental health uh, specialist to help you with addressing some of the issues. But in general, it's easier to convince. But I have very few people that might be, you know, still there denying, uh, not denying actually, but uh, they don't want to take medication, for example, although yes. they really need to take medication. They said we can do it maybe on a natural way. Or a, so I would tell them, take the medication, do the natural way, whatever you want to do, then we can stop it. But still the number is high, you need to be treated. So mental help is needed and that's why in our hospital now, we have the mental specialist joining the team in the hospital. Whenever we have cases like that, we can refer to them to help us in that aspect. Well, doctor, that uh, that all is very information and good to see that the hospital also yeah. provides a 360 degree approach. We just get into some quick sure. uh, facts and questions. So what's the very interesting myth that you've heard about diabetes? Well, eating sugars make you have diabetes. That's, <laughs> that's the biggest myth. Uh, I would say that it's not eating sugar. I'm not saying sugar is good, but eating sugar or whatever you eat and you increase your weight and sugar can increase your weight. But by just eating sugars or carbohydrates in general, it will not cause diabetes unless you end it with you know, increasing weight, whether it is fat, whether it's sugar, but sugar, sometimes the problem with sugar is make you more hungry, you know, and you need to eat more and more and more, and you get into more eating actually. But in general, it's not the sugar itself, it's the weight increase that caused that. Uh, that's one of the thing. Um, the other thing is people say, you know, some of the medication, they don't like this medication because they think natural, you know, is better. Some of the natural uh, is okay to be used and tried, but I think if the number is high, you can combine them if you want, that's okay, unless it is uh, not safe thing because some of the cases they go to places sometimes I have some case in the past they go to like herbal supposed to be but they have uh, apparently turned to be they're using some medication of diabetes they make it in a powder and, and they make it ready as a herbal and turn to be medication of diabetes and they get troubles with that actually okay. more problem so some natural you know like cinnamon I don't know what's in, uh, in I think fenugreek it's called in English yes uh, it is, uh, these are something natural, it can be used in a natural way, it's okay to use it, you know. Yeah. But in general, you have to get to the goal. The goal is to reach, as, as I said earlier to you, first of all, to reach to the goal of good diabetes control, and even better after that, and that's what I usually do, after that I want it to be as normal as possible. And thank you doctor for sure. your uh, time and uh, highlighting the importance of diabetes awareness and I think that we have reached a, a step further on the access to diabetes care right. goal. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and I hope that people benefit from this meeting. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.